T Software here and today is the final day of May's week. It's the final video and it's video three. Today we're gonna round off the maze, gonna put it all together. So here I've created a brand new maze. I've made it wider and I've made it smaller so it's easier to program. I have used a picture box with just a simple black square for us to control around the maze. Um, I've just built this, made it look good. I've used a fine, I've used a label at the end there in green to show how, where we finish and I've placed a new label in there for score. So this video I will show you what code I've used. We are using the code from the second video but I'm not going to go into that in that much detail because it's in the other video. I'll just show you how to do it. Then we're going to look at using a timer and placing in a score and how we jump back to the beginning location. So if you haven't watched the previous two videos, I would suggest you do. Links are in the description. I'll place a link in the video itself. So let's get started. Okay, so firstly, I used a series of labels here to create the maze itself. I used four labels to go around the border. So if we collide with the border, we go back. This all here is just for sure, basically. We need a, a box up here, a label, sorry for the score which I've added in. This is our pitch box, uh, pitch box one. It's exactly the same as the one which we used in video one for when we're moving. The labels are exactly the same as video two. And in video two, I looked at the naming of the labels. I've named all these LBL one to 20. I have 20 labels on here and I've named them all from lib LBL1 to LBL20 so when we come to create the if statement which I've already done which I will show you in a moment I've just copied and pasted it 20 times and changed the values that are in it this one I've created which is LBL finish when we collide with this that's going to end the game so other than that this is what we do and I will show you the code Okay, so this is the code. Uh, this section here is the controls to move the pitch box. Um, I've left it at three like we did in the first video. I just think that works the best for this maze. So what you need to do first is, is create your if statement when you intersect with LBL1. Now you need to find your start location where you want to put your picture box to start and where you want it to return to. So mine here was 1884. So when we collide with the label, will we return to the top 84 to the left 18? So I then copied and pasted this 20 times so it gets copied 20 times and then we replace each value with LBL 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 for the amount that you need in your maze itself so you need to do this for every single label that you want to collide with other than the LBL finish which we're going to do now okay, so we're going to look at the finish label first so what we want to do is when we roll over the finish I want it to show a message box and show our score which we've got. So first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in our timer which is going to run the score because I want the timer to stop when we roll over this. So this is the first thing I'm going to do is add a timer. Timer. Right, timer one. So I'm going to first copy one of these and paste it and then LBL20 I will remove. I've called my finish label LBL finish so I'm going to add that in there. Now I don't want that to jump up to that location so I'm going to remove that so I'm going to add MSG box for message box then I want score Actually, I'm going to put your score is in quotations. So 
I'm going to concatenate this. So your score is and score. I created a variable earlier called score, which is an integer. This is going to hold our score, which goes along with our score here. So this is what this holds. So I've created it up here. I've created it as a global. And that's our message box. Okay, so next we are going to add timer one dot end timer one dot stop. That's the one that we want. So when this ends, the timer stops. Therefore, we stop removing our score. Okay, now we're going to move on to the scoring system itself. Okay, so now I'm going to change the settings of timer one. So we have interval here of 100. I'm going to change this to a thousand. So with every thousand, the timer will tick. So when that ticks, it's going to edit our score. Now, our variable here, dim score is integer. I'm going to set this as 1000. So when you start the game, you're going to start with a thousand points. Is every time the time it ticks you are going to lose so many points so the faster you get to the end the faster by like the highest score you're going to get basically so in with this when you collide with a wall you will be deducted so many points so we'll see you get deducted 100 points so we'll start with that so with dim score is a thousand so we need to add in as timer dot tick. So it went timer one dot tick. So what I've done here is I've just gone from properties into events by clicking the little lightning bolt on timer one. So this is behavior tick. This is how we work with timers. Just press enter. So it's every time the timer ticks, we then does something. So we take our value of score equals score minus 10 because we've dim scores integer and it's equal to a thousand so every time the timer ticks it's going to take away 10. okay so before we debug we need to start the timer so to get the timer to start we want the timer to start as soon as the form loads so we're going to go back to design view and we're going to click on the outside to make sure that form one is selected we're then going to click on the lightning bolt which is the event down to load in behavior I'm going to click in there and press enter so we get a new subroutine produced for form 1 load and in here we're going to put timer 1 dot start so this is going to start our timer okay so the next thing we want to do is set up how our score is going to decrease well we need to output we got here that score equals score minus 10 so it's going to decrease by 10 so what we need to do is we need to link that up with our label here which has score in it now I'm actually going to change that to 1000 instead of score so it's going to show 1000 is our original score uh, text 1000 right and um, we're going to go back to our code and in here we are going to put lbl score because that's what i've called my label dot text it will str which means it's going to convert our integer score into a string so it can be output and next what we're going to do is we need some way of ending the game if the score reaches zero. So I'm going to use basically just use a simple if statement. So I'm going to do if score equals zero, then timer one dot stop message box you lose something easy like that. So we'll put that in. So we're going to put if score equals zero, then timer one dot stop. I'm going to 
get a message box saying you lose that'll do okay so that's going to end the game when we run out of time basically when our score reaches zero um, so we'll try this out we'll go and debug okay so you see our scores now ticking down 60, 50, 40, 30 and we can move about okay so now we need to set up the point deduction so that points are taken away when we collide with the labels so we're going to be clever and create a function to do this for us and then just refer to the function in each if statement we'll just call it each time to deduct the points for us instead of typing in score equals score minus 100 in every single one so it saves time so we're going to do function points it's going to do score which is our variable that holds the score equals score minus 100 okay so that's our points so we need to go back right the way to the top of our if statements that we've used for the collisions so if pitch box one dot bounds so intersects with the label one dot bounds then blah 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 all of them we need to put points open brackets close brackets in there so when that collides it's going to call the value points which is going to then deduct 100 points away from our score because this is easier than typing in score minus score equals 100 score equals score minus 100 so points and we'll just, just copy and paste that I think Seems the easiest way to do it. I'll have to go through and check, make sure you don't put points in twice in each if statement because then you get a deduction of 200 because it will call points twice. So that's it, and that's points in all of my statements. Make sure I haven't put two in any of them. No, I haven't. Okay, so that's good. Now we've got the points deduction in. Uh, I will go and test that. Okay, so you can test this. I've tested it now and it works. Thanks for watching. This is the end of May's week. Subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you later.